I want to look at an example of calculating tracking signals. The tracking signals is the uh, subject matter for module 9. First things first, we've already done forecasting, we've already calculated deviations, and we've already met this cumulative sum of errors and the mean absolute deviation, but here we're calculating these two cumulative sum and a MAD in a different way, and I'll show you in a minute, and it's being used to calculate this tracking signal. The forecast for the example that I'm going through, you can see on page 526 and 27, and in this one, uh, we have an X value construction permits and a Y value equaling total output. And we can construct a forecast as the intercept plus the slope times the number of permits times the X value. Okay, so here's my forecast output. So Total tile cells and the forecast is for tile cells, so they share the same units. That's going to be a big deal to me a little later. All right, I can just, given that I did the absolute references, see the dollar signs, I did the absolute references to slope and intercept. I can go ahead and I can just copy this all the way down the column. And then I can start calculating the deviation. Once again, it's something we already know. It's the actual sales minus what was forecast. And the absolute deviation is just the absolute value of the deviation. So that should be easy to forecast as well. Okay. Now, we're on our way to a tracking signal. In order to do this, as the notes, as my lecture notes say, or my class notes say, I need a cumulative sum of errors. Now, this cumulative sum of errors is cumulative through time t. So if I'm calculating a cumulative sum of errors for time period 1, the only information I have is the sum from time period 1. Now, I want to hook this up so that I can copy it. If I copy it right now, it's not going to sum. All it's going to do is collect one piece of information. What I want is for this sum to be anchored to the cell E3 and then the first E3. So I'm going to make it an absolute reference. And I want the second E3 to change to E4, E5, E6, so on. So I keep accumulating these sum, these error terms. Okay. There's more than one way to do this, uh, but this is, in my opinion, one of the easiest ways or straightforward. Now, I want to do the same thing with the mean absolute deviation. So mean means take an average. And what am I taking an average of? I'm taking an average of these absolute deviations. Well, again, I'm going to take an average of one number in time period one. But I want the average of two numbers in time period two. So but I, I want this time period one data to stay in my second average and my third, and my fourth, all the way through my twelfth. Okay, so I am going to, I am going to fix that first uh, cell reference, the F3, and then I'm going to let the second cell reference vary as we go. Okay. The tracking signal, and this is true for any of these exercises you do, the tracking signal for time period one is either going to be one or minus one, right? So in our case, it's going to be minus one as it's the ratio of the cumulative sum of errors and the mean absolute average, excuse me, mean absolute deviation. Notice they're the same number differing by a sign. So this is expected. Notice I'm starting to build a picture down here. I'll tell you about it in a minute. All right, now let's see if this function is doing what I want. Okay. Cumulative sum of errors in time period two, I want it to be the sum of the time period one and two deviations. Okay, so according to what I see here, we did all right, we're copying, we've got the first and second year in this cumulative sum of errors. Three years in this one. Okay, so it's copying just fine. Let's make sure that this one's copying fine. So the mean absolute deviation, okay, I have in period two, I have two periods of absolute deviations in my average. In period three, I have three periods of absolute deviation. Okay, feeling okay there. Tracking signal, whoops, that's all right, we'll fix
finish it up here and we won't be divided by zero. Okay. Notice the magnitude of the numbers on these tracking signals. That's, this is, may as well be zero. That's 4.3 times 10 to the negative 15th, which for all purposes is zero. Your computer just doesn't know it yet. Okay, when I'm looking at the magnitude of these numbers, they're consistently between uh, minus four and four, for example, or even here between minus three and three. So that's actually pretty good. If you start looking at anything but what your authors wrote, that's actually pretty good. As long as our tracking signal lies somewhere between the numbers minus four and, and positive four, life is good. So uh, what I want to do is I want to create a boundary in my picture so that it's easy to see when we're out of bounds or when we're still in bounds. So I'm going to make the boundaries uh, down to minus three and up to positive three. And I'm just going to copy those down. And as soon as I do this chart, I'm going to pop in my boundaries. Uh, I, I guess I, maybe I should have set this up. Here's how I'm creating the tracking. Excuse me, the tracking signal is this column and this column. And then I'm just inserting a plot. Okay, so nothing, nothing mysterious, but I did want you to see where that came from. Similarly, my uh, bounded tracking signal. All I did is, I didn't want this chart because it looks rough with the points in here. So I chose this one and left the dots out. Okay. All right, so that's how these charts were created. Now, just a word for, for a minute. Uh, the presentation by your author on pages 250, excuse me, 526 and 527 is a little rough. Uh, there's a few things that I, I think that they have accidentally uh, overlooked. I, I say that because I know that these books are terribly hard to get together in one piece and all right, which is why we have different editions. So I will be texting, I will be emailing the book, my book representative and telling them that I'm seeing errors in some of the math in, in this section. I would be very impressed if you could have a conversation with me and see if you spot the errors. Uh, one of the errors is in the screenshot 1313. If you can see that, let me know. Anyway, thank you, and I will talk to you later.